I'm in Gretna, Manitoba right now, but a half an hour away from Canada's southern border with the United States. And the red brick building behind me, once upon a time, it was a nursing home. And despite this province's nursing home shortage, it's now been converted into a refugee holding space for people who have illegally jumped Canada's border. This is now my second time visiting here. The first time we were told we weren't allowed in because we were media. I'm sorry, who did you say you were with uh, Rebel Media in Toronto. If you're media, then you have to leave the building and call the number on the front of the door. We can't give you a tour. No? No. Okay. Uh, well, after, if, can we arrange a tour, though? There will be no tours as long as we have residents inside. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, but if you, the person you need to talk to is Caroline, so if you just contact the number on the front of the door, she'd be the person that can answer any questions that you have. Can you tell us how many people are here right now? Can I give you any information? If you want to speak to the media, you've got to contact the person out front. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I followed up. I reached out to the number provided for media contact. I was then told that no one could be made available to come on camera, but they were willing to provide me with a written answer to my question. So I shot them an email. Inside that email, they told me that they couldn't provide any information with respect to a demographic breakdown, citing security concerns. Couldn't tell me how many men versus women, how many families or children, or where these illegal border jumpers had come from. Well, I returned back to the scene, and this is how I was greeted. You can't tell me any more information about the people that are inside there? If you provide a written, your questions in writing, we'll give I you did. the information we can. And it said that you can give me any sort of information about demographics? Uh, no, we're, there's not a lot of people here right now. We don't want to... Um, it, there are so few people here right now. Providing demographic information would essentially identify them. If there were more people, would you be able to do it? Possibly. So there, out of there were there were 41 people earlier this week, as I understand it. Yeah. So could you tell me the demographics of those people? No. Why not? Uh, if you've got questions, send them in writing. I, I did, but I'm not satisfied, and I'd like to have someone on camera. Well, and we're not going on camera. I'm not breaking the Elections Financing Act. So, thank you. Now, despite the fact that officials are trying to obfuscate what's happening behind these walls, here's what we do know. This refugee centre has been open for about two weeks, and already as early as this week, they had 41 residents, read illegal migrants, inside. Now, they're, we're told they're down to eight. That's because folks are to stay here for anywhere between two to five days before being shipped off to one of three different Winnipeg stations for these refugees. Inside these illegal and fake refugees are granted an initial application for the Canadian Border Services Agencies, along with screening for employment and income assistance benefits should they choose to remain in Manitoba. We also know that the illegal migrants have been offered full access to laundry services as well as a common area space and a full kitchen. Also, a new 11 p.m. curfew has been placed on residents and when pressed, officials said that was just to ensure quiet time for the families who are inside. And I'd be remiss not to mention the fact that this refugee holding centre is just metres away from the local school in Gretna. So, at the end of the day, Illegal migrants who have crossed into our country are being housed on the taxpayer dollar, being offered additional taxpayer funded services, including employment and income assistance. And we, the media, aren't being granted any access. For the Rebel.media, I'm Faith Goldie. If you enjoy our coverage of this border crisis, please visit guardtheborder.com and support our journalism.